Greetings comic lovers and welcome back to Casually Comics, the channel where we chat all things comics, from reviews of comics new and old, to history, to anecdotes, to really wherever our whims take us. Resident Alien. It's time to talk about it, not just because it has a sci-fi series at the time of this recording. Siffy. S-Y-F-Y. When I was a kid, it was sci-fi. And so whenever I see this, I can't say it. I just can't. I can't. Now this adaptation was laboring in pre-production hell for a bit. It's finally free, but it wouldn't exist at all without the comic series that spawned it. A quiet, understated alien drama that manages to both present some classic tropes and subvert some of the more common within the alien coming to earth genre. It's a wistful labor of love that took a decade to complete. It's just about to reach its conclusion at the time of this recording and many don't know that it exists. So let's change that. Let's talk about Resident Alien. But before we get started, I'm Sasha and if you're enjoying this content, you know what to do. Hit that like button, hit the subscribe button, join us on this comic book journey. Resident Alien is written by Peter Hogan with art by Steve Parkhouse. And we have the same team all the way through. It was originally serialized in Dark Horse Presents in 2011 before being released as a mini in 2012. Because of a desire not to overload the artist Park House, this series did not come out monthly, but rather it came out as a series of mini arcs, so usually one per year, roughly. But obviously, since this took 10 years and there are only six arcs, that is not the case. Hogan described the concept for this presentation of the series as, it's a pretty big story composed of a series of mini series. Each mini series will have its own mystery to be solved. The overarching plot involves Hari, or Harry, the Earth version of his name, who has found himself trapped on Earth after his ship was shot down by a fighter plane. Since his abilities to keep himself hidden rely on mental perception, which isn't guaranteed to work on all the population and also leaves him susceptible to being seen by technology, he has decided to hide. He's living outside of the small fictional town of Patience, Washington. He keeps himself busy by reading crime novels and watching detective shows and dramas and movies. Noir just loves that kind of stuff. And through this, he's begun to study human nature, or well, the concept of it through these fictionalized versions. However, his quiet existence comes to an end when the doctor of the town he is staying by is murdered. And he is asked to offer for assistance, as his cover was that he is a retired doctor named Harry Vanderspiegel. However, since he has some empathic abilities, he is able to discern that the person that they have in custody is not the correct person. He did not do the crime. It's kind of sort of empathic, but mostly it's being able to read people really, really well down to their gestures and the like. He's very, very perceptive, so it can come across that way. Now, our protagonist, because of his love of murder mysteries, cannot resist helping out. A decision that sees him becoming more and more involved in the town's daily life, and also just with Earth life in general. The series, though not a humorous one, is not bereft of jokes, but the tone is very contemplative and slow. Harry can be a passive protagonist at many points, with the story driving him to action rather than the other way around. Hogan cites his inspiration for the series as My Favorite Martian, Twin Peaks, and The Man Who Fell to Earth. And that's a very good description, because it is very much the vibe you get reading it. Especially the town scenes, they are very Twin Peaks. That's damn good coffee. As the series goes on, you learn more and more about Harry's backstory, why he came to Earth, and the overarching plot of him being hunted by the government begins to become more and more pressing. A slow burn, though while it doesn't feel urgent, begins to fill the reader with a sense of dread and unease as you realize with each mini that you read, they're getting closer and closer to finding him. You also learn more about the people in the town, and it's the beginning of a burgeoning, potential-ish, maybe romance between Harry and Asta, a woman who can almost see him as he is. There is some Native American mysticism employed in this series, and it does veer towards the natives are all mystical trope, but manages to give the characters more traits on top of that. But it is a Miles Will Vary type thing. This series consists of six minis. Welcome to Earth, The Suicide Blonde, The Sam Hain Mystery, The Man With No Name, An Alien in New York, and ends with Your Rides Here. At the time of this recording, you don't know if things get super popular, they can show up with a dump truck full of money and ask you to write more. I'm waiting for my dump truck. There's some tongue-in-cheek humor in these titles, a punny wit. So while humor is not the focus of these stories, it doesn't rely on the, oh wow, Harry he's an alien and he doesn't know how to do things. Despite this, it does still have a dry playfulness about it. It's a little bit cleverer. Everything about this series plays out slowly, layers pulling back. Hogan jokingly stated, we hope to keep going for a good long time. I called the town patience for a reason. What really stands out about this series is Harry, who is a humble observer, a bit wary, but who finds himself becoming a part of the life he's tried to stay out of for both his safety and the safety of others. This is very deliberate. Hogan wanted to try something different with his protagonist. I have another quote. I have so many today. I thought the concept of aliens being monsters and invaders had become stale, so I tried doing something different, having him be basically a nice guy who's been shipwrecked here and is trying to 
can make the best of it makes for an interesting view of humanity. The key point is that to Harry, it's us who are the aliens, and it's that aspect which seems to have touched a nerve with readers. Obviously, I'm very pleased people like Harry so much. So of course, I'm gonna go through the first issue, give you a little sample to see if you're interested in checking out Resident Alien, which I'm sure, thanks to the TV series, will now be re-released and recollected in trades, accessible trades, beautiful trades. Resident Alien issue zero, because the first couple of series go from zero to three, which is a personal pet peeve of mine. Start at one, please. Issue zeros are always in this odd space of, do I need to read it? Do I need a two zero? Why are we starting at zero? Our cover shows Harry looking slightly menacing, walking through the desert. And if you're thinking, that design reminds me of something, you may be thinking of Chameleon Boy, Reap Daigle of the Legion of Superheroes. And that's intentional. Hogan requested that Parkhouse model his design off of the Silver Age hero. The story opens on two officers seeking out Harry at his secluded cabin in the woods. As they walk through, they're commenting that he's a bit odd, standoffish, and nobody really knows anything about him. So we're drawn to a cabin on a lake, and we're building to the reveal that, I mean, you know the title and you've seen the cover, you already know, but it's gonna be our first good real look at Harry. I know how to answer this. It's a phrase I've heard on a thousand TV shows. Is there a problem, officers? Don't see me as I am. Don't see me as I am. Everything is normal. One of the interesting facets of this series is that the reader always sees Harry as he is, in his alien form. We don't see the perception that he is casting, so we don't really know what he looks like to anybody else. The time of this recording, there's still one issue to come out. I'm hedging all the bets. Seeing him like this creates a sense of intimacy and closeness with Harry, as if you're in on this special secret. It also helps put you in his shoes, as you see visually how out of place he is compared to the other characters. We had a murder in town last night. How fascinating. Awful. Harry is intrigued but confused and wonders if he's a suspect, but they tell him no. They need his expertise because the person murdered was their doctor. He goes along with them to help because he doesn't want to arouse suspicion by refusing. We then see a flashback of Harry from three years prior when he first arrived, giving himself a pep talk that he can do it. He can fit in, but the best way to do so is to keep his head down. I'm trapped. Calm. 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 Harry is able to interact with the officers, make small talk about his name and the like, but he's nervous. Not to the point that it shows out really to other people, but it's something that we're keenly aware of because we're in on his inner monologue. He hasn't interacted with humans all that much, not because he doesn't know how to, but because he is worried that he may do something that might put them off, that might show them that he's not exactly the same as them. He doesn't understand all of their nuances of behavior yet. They arrive at the murder scene where Dr. Hodges was killed, and we meet Asta, one of the more important supporting characters of the series. Though most people who are introduced in this series end up playing a part or some kind of key role at at least one point in one of the minis. Harry is fascinated by the entire process and is qualified having studied human anatomy extensively. Plus he's been watching and reading all of those crime dramas, absorbing. He's got those kind of vicarious forensic skills or the skills you think you have after watching a lot of murder mysteries. Only in his case he's pretty accurate because of his other skills on top of it. Forensics training from watching CSI. Yes, this is fascinating. but. I mustn't get seduced by it. Time to extricate myself. Harry tries to leave, but instead finds himself in a conversation with the mayor, who wants him to sub in for their doctor just until the replacement gets there. It should only be a week. That's always how it starts. It's never just a week. What can I say? This just gets worse and worse. And so he finds himself as the doctor of patients. Yes, that is a pun. And yes, the author is aware of it. He's trying to get a hold of the mayor who's dodging his calls and he assumes it's because they haven't actually found a replacement yet, but he finds that he's not mad because he's really enjoying himself. And he admits to himself that he's been lonely. And even if these people aren't his people, there are still people he can interact with. He likes treating them and listening to their lives. And he finds himself fascinated by their lives, which he can easily discern. Also, there's a video store in this town. All of this is old timey. He's renting Dial M for murder, because of course he is. He's renting pointed video that is symbolic of the plot number one. You sure like your murder mysteries, don't you, Doc? I always like to try to work out who the killer is. Harry is starting to wonder a couple of things. Could he find this killer? And also, could he live on Earth? Be among the people. In training, they told me my mental powers simply wouldn't work on some humans. That they'd see me as I really am. But the estimate was very low just one in a million of a group of people who are all conveniently living in this small town. And this issue ends with a gun pointed at him, just as he was thinking that the odds that someone could see him as he is were super low. Issue zero, which is actually issue one, but it's called issue zero for reasons. This first issue, and indeed this first mini, sets out the tone and vibe for the whole thing. So if you're not sold from here, the tone does not change. You just learn more and more as it goes on. For some, I can see the series being too slow, or the mystery is not packing enough wow factor shock value, or perhaps not 
not be presented in a way that one enjoys. It can be finicky with mysteries, how one likes them. If you feel you've gotten enough clues or not to solve it yourself, if you're a person who enjoys solving it yourself. And if you don't like Harry, then this is gonna be a rough ride because a good deal of this series just deals with his pontifications and musings about his condition on this planet and what he's going through. You're watching him and the people around him evolve through their relationship to him. And if you're a fan of some of those tried and true fish out of water tropes, just, oh wow, the wacky, what's he doing? Oh no, is he drinking mustard or something? You may find yourself missing those in the reserved Harry, who is very careful and actually passes for human quite well. He rarely has awkward moments in that way. Instead, the conflict arises from the mysteries around him, the people hunting him down, and the existential questions you're meant to ponder as you learn the true extent to which he is stranded. Also, if the art doesn't work for you, as with most comic book series, this will probably be a no-go. Now, as mentioned, there is an adaptation, and it takes a very different approach. Different tone, going for a more broad comedic take, an embracing of those more classic fish out of water tropes, and some surprisingly dark Harry doesn't get morality or care about it moments. You got a different motivation, a different backstory. Just, yeah different. You get a different experience reading it and watching it. So really you're kind of getting two separate products with the same core theme-ish. I enjoy both for very different reasons. So they're both worth checking out or one may gel with you more than the other or one may anger you. It's a discussion for another time. Hogan is pleased his work has finally hit the small screen as this adaptation has been a long time coming. And he seems okay with the end results. He stated, I was very nervous when I sat down to watch the pilot. After about 10 minutes, it won me over. It is very different, there's no denying that, but I don't really mind because it's really good. The whole end product is enjoyable. If you are interested in this comic series, now is a good time to get it because it's concluding at this point. So you can kind of access it more easily than when it was coming coming out. It did take 10 years, so that's a long time to be waiting from issue to issue. It's a good time to just jump in and read the whole thing in a chunk. So yes, Resonant Alien. If anything about this sound intriguing, then check it out. And don't forget, your ride's here. If you like finding out about these less mainstream forays, we have a playlist for that. We've talked about Chew, Day Tripper, Astro City, and more. We have a link down below. Tell me things down below. Had you heard of Resident Alien? What was that hand gesture, Zuri? Uh, I'm a mannequin. Did you like its mellow vibe? What's your favorite mystery? Mine is an alien in New York. You into Harry's design? Are you watching the series? Was none of this for you? Get out of my face. Do we talk about the differences between the show and the comic? Please share all your thoughts down below. While you're down there, please do all the other YouTube things. Like, share, comment, subscribe, and hit the bell notification so that you never miss a vid. Thanks so much for taking the time of your day spent discussing comics with me. I always appreciate it, and I will see you again soon. Bye-bye.